In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Hoka on on a Bondi 7. Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to 40 Runs. Now, if this is your first time at 40 Runs, I want you to smash that pink button down there that says subscribe on it. Go to our Facebook page and join the 40 Runs running community and check out the description. There's loads of cool things, including a link where you can get these. Now, these are the black, 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 black version of the Bondi 7. So let's have a look and see if they're any good and get stuck in. Right guys, so here we go. Bondi 7 Max Cushioned Running Shoe from Hoka. Now, this is an extremely popular shoe in the Hoka lineup and they've just updated it. They haven't really done too much to it in terms of update. They've basically just given it a new um, sort of updated upper and the rest of it is very similar to what was there before. And if it's not broke, don't try and fix it. Now let's get into some of the stats and some of the features of this big old boy. Um, firstly, let's talk about the price. It's 120 pounds here in the UK, which I don't think actually, to be honest with you, is not too bad really. Uh, what else have we got? We've got an 11.4 ounce weight, uh, which is quite heavy, but don't forget you've got a massive slab of EVA. Uh, you've got a four mil drop. You've got 33 stack in the back, 29 in the front. Like I said a second ago, you've got this reworked upper, uh, which is... Um, Got a multi-level engineered mesh uh, with a number of sort of minor laminated overlays. We'll come on to those in a second. Uh, the midsole is, like I said, is like this massive slab of EVO foam, uh, which isn't like the flashiest or coolest material out there, but it does the trick. And then obviously you've got the hocker, the hocker, the hoker, uh, Meta Rocker on it. Now the shoe's actually 125 pounds. I was wrong. Uh, it's 125 pounds. Now it does come in some other colorways, but I kind of like the black, black, black 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 version which uh is very similar to the ghost 13 that i've got now these are the sort of um overlays i was talking about can you see that and they've done the similar sort of thing on the clifton 7 they've got rid of some of the um overly excessive uh, overlays and they've sort of lined it up and that's what they've done there now hoka shoes are cool if they suit you. Now, some of them do come up narrow. I actually found that the Bondi 7 hasn't come up narrow and it's true to size. Uh, this is a UK nine and a half. Some of the shoes out there, they do come up narrow. Um, uh, what's it, a good example? Eee... Rincon 2, good example. Um, that came up slightly narrower, but the Clifton 7 was a little bit wider than I was expecting. The Clifton Edge has got loads of room in it. And this is just right, actually, the Bondi 7, the way they've done it. Uh, sometimes with Clifton and um, Clifton's uh, with Hoka's, my feet feel a little bit like that, but actually, again, they're a bit like that and they're nice and stretched out and normal in this shoe, which is kind of cool. So, the fit is actually kind of wicked. Uh, around here, you've got just amount, uh, the right amount of foam in there, not too much, not too little. The tongue's nice and traditional, um, and it just has got enough foam and it's not overly um, thick. I think with this shoe, because it's got so much EVA. I would be concerned if it had too much, uh, any more sort of foamy. I just think it would be like feel like too much shoe, but they've done a good job of sort of making the right amount, a nice balance actually to, to make your foot feel comfortable, but not feel like it's being suffocated. Uh, you've got a cool tab on the back. You've got a bit of reflective elements on the back as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, the lacing's not stupid like the Clifton Edge, so it's not too bad. Um, and the whole lacing is sort of traditional and does a good job, gives you a nice locked down feel. You've got elements of structure along the lateral side, so it just kind of uh, keeps you nice and tidy. I would have preferred a little, maybe some more stability on the heel, maybe a little heel counter would have done us some favors, especially with the high stack, you know, you can sort of rock around. Maybe that's something they could have thought about, um, you know, like they did in the uh, Carbon X with the SPE, they put that heel counter. It's maybe something they could think about. 
For the next version, on the outsole, uh, you've got strategically placed bits of rubber, um, and there's plenty of grip down there. Um, there's always a question with Hoka about wear and tear. Um, we'll see how we get on with that, but there's uh, definitely um, nice bits of rubber versus some of the other shoes. Okay, so that's that out of the way. Now, let's talk about this big slab of EVA foam. Now, I think most people buy these shoes who want a super comfortable ride, um, plenty of cushioning, and that combined with the rocker just to sort of move you along. This is not obviously an up-tempo shoe. You've got to be looking at the ring con for that. Um, this is all about sort of uh, just eating up miles. The Clifton 7 is a, is a sort of middle um, of the road version of this against the ring con. So you've got like the Carbon X, You've then got like the Rincon, I would say, and then you've got like the Clifton 7, and then you've got like the max cushioning of the Bondi down at the bottom, roughly speaking. How does it feel? Well, it kind of feels a bit sort of nothing. It's it's not very inspiring. It's uh, a little bit stiff. Uh, it will sort of get better the more miles that I put into it. Uh, they're always the same with Hoka, but it does feel sort of stiffer than other versions of Hoka shoes that I've had, I was expecting it to feel a little bit more softer. Uh, maybe that's because of the visuals, you know, so much EVA, I was expecting it to be a little bit softer. It felt cumbersome uh, versus like the Clifton 7. The Clifton 7, I think, is the right stack height. For me, there was just a little bit too much stack here. But that said, you might be looking for a max cushion shoe, right? So this is gonna suit you to the T. To the but personally, I think if you're looking for something that's max cushioned, I would look at like something like the Triumph 17, uh, 18 even, the new version. Check out the review I've done of that. I just think that's a slightly better shoe in terms of it just gives you that little bit more feedback with the Power Run Plus midsole, where they've tweaked the geometry. It just gives you that little bit more feedback than this. This just lacks any sort of feeling on the roads, any sort of feeling down the tow pass, you're just hitting sort of EVA foam and then going off. It just doesn't really inspire me to go out and run, you know, fast, slow, eat up miles. It's just it's just a bit of a, a bit of a letdown, I think. I think personally, if you're looking at the Bondi 7, it is a good shoe for, you know, max cushioning, but me personally, I prefer the Clifton 7, and I think that's where we'll leave it. If you're looking at the Hoka Bondi 7, it is a, you know, mild update, but personally, even though it is a really popular shoe, I would go with the reworked new Clifton 7.